Hello everyone. I love Portal. It's one of the game series I keep coming back to even though I know all the test chambers by heart just to experience the story over and over again. I would by no means call myself extremely well versed in the lore, but I know quite a lot about the Half-Life universe and over the years of playing the Half-Life and Portal games, a few things came to mind that I consider as my headcanon for the series. I by no means want to destroy your worldview of the universe as you have it. It's just a few things that I would like to share with you, especially of the rivalry between Black Mesa and Aperture Science. I'm doing this video partially as a response to Leadhead's theory called the Moron Theory, which considers every character in Portal 2 as a moron. While I like this video a lot, I always had a few personal gripes and felt the need to address them. This video will first start with debunking a few arguments made in the video and later diving right into some personal views I have in the grand law of Half-Life. Without further ado, I'd like to dive right in. Cave Johnson is a moron. In Leadhead's video, he proposes the idea that Cave Johnson is nothing more than a moron who got lucky selling shower curtains. While it's true that Cave doesn't necessarily have any background in any scientific fields, nor knows about the scientific process, this isn't all what his character is about. Cave Johnson foremost isn't just a quirky businessman, but an exceptional visionary who aimed to push the boundaries at m almost every field cutting no corners at everything he did. Science isn't about why, it's about why not! While his approach to science was seen as seemingly random, he intended to approach science from a different angle. Any previous scientific facts and discoveries he decided to ignore, so the scientific advancements in Aperture and its intellectual property were fully attributed to the company without any help by previous scientific knowledge. They say great science is built on the shoulders of giants. Not here. At Aperture, we do all our science from scratch. No hand-holding. Leadhead also points out that the senseless venture of Cave Johnson buying moon rocks just because of his myronic idea that it has to be scientific because it's the moon, and just by the sheer luck finding out that moon rocks as, as a great porno conductor, while it was a senseless venture for Cave to buy the rocks and make him into a gel, risking his own life and safety in the process, this also undermines the fact that a lot of scientific breakthroughs happen by sheer irrational decisions. Some examples include the discovery of penicillin, the first antibiotic. In 1928, Alexander Fleming noticed a petri dish containing bacteria being contaminated with mold. Now, instead of disregarding the dish, strangely enough, he decided to observe the mold and figured out that the mold had actually killed the bacteria. Another great example of an accidental and irrational discovery was by Henri Becquerel. Back in the day, it was considered that uranium actually stored solar radiation. Henry would show to his students an experiment on some photographic plates and how the uranium he left in the sun for a while would cause the photographic plates wrapped in a dark paper to be colored. Due to an irrational idea, he left the plates in his desk drawer, finding out later that the plate had been developed without being in sunlight. He then figured out that the sun had actually nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it, and this was the discovery of nuclear radiation. Cave Johnson knew that irrational decisions can end up in fundamental scientific discoveries, and these are the true reasons Cave orders his scientists to do irrational strange tests and ventures. The Moron Theory video also touches on the fact that due to Cave Johnson being a moron and not giving the portal gun out to the general public instead refining it, he inadvertently saved the world from being totally decimated by the Combine. Here I'd like to touch on some facts in the grand law of the Half-Life universe and how this wasn't a decision made out of stupidity, but out of extreme importance. Whilst Aperture had discovered teleportation in the 50s, their teleportation technology, let alone the portal gun, could be considered safe by any means necessary. The original quantum tunneling device was bulky, incredibly heavy, and most likely dangerous to use. 
Just by looking at this poster in this test chamber, you can see that the early iterations of the Protocon could not be usable by an everyday member of the public. Old prototypes of the Protocon were therefore most likely handled by the war heroes, who were used in carrying heavy military equipment in their missions. That and the fact that due to Aperture being known for their blatant OSHA violations meant they had to refine their products so they could be sold to the general public. However, there would be another fact that would make it important to keep the future of the Portal Project under heavy secrecy. That one being the rivalry with Black Mesa. Greetings, friend. I'm Cave Johnson, CEO of Aperture Science. You might know us as a vital participant in the 1968 Senate hearings on missing astronauts. And you've most likely used one of the many products we invented, but that other people have somehow managed to steal from us. Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt... Black Mesa was founded in the 1950s and had yet to find their success as a new science company. Aperture Science at that time had established itself as the leading science company in the United States, winning several awards. Seeing this, Black Mesa being mainly funded by the US federal government seemed to undermine privately owned companies such as Aperture Science by committing corporate espionage. Even though we don't know the extent of technology stolen by Black Mesa from Aperture, we know of a few that we are going to discuss later on in this video. At the same time, several of their astronaut test subjects had seemingly disappeared this subsequently ended in Aperture Science having its funding cut by the government and being forced to declare bankruptcy. Aperture, due to this, had to become even more self-reliant. Employees and test subjects can't be asked to just keep working for a meager paycheck, sometimes as low as $60, so Aperture most likely started slowly to become independent from the outside world, so food and personal accommodation can be provided for in the facility. This may have given the employees some incentive to keep working despite them having no income. The US government, seeing that despite throwing Aperture under the bus, their scientific experiments seemed to continue, and knowing that Aperture Science was their most cutting-edge science company of their time, decided to commit corporate espionage, to steal their technology so Aperture would stay in decline and bankruptcy whilst they reap the profits. After a few technologies made it to the outside world that were very similar to a project Aperture themselves were working on, Cave knew that he was being spied on, which brought him to the decision to keep the Portal Project a heavily guarded company secret to be perfected as a sort of Hail Mary to bring his company out of bankruptcy. This was therefore a strategic move against Black Mesa. One of the early experiments on Portal technology ended up being the Borealis, using instant teleportation. Now, this turned out to be a catastrophic disaster, because the project ended up in the vessel disappearing and never being found for years. This forced the company to work on other types of portal technology utilizing wormholes as used by the portal gun, deciding to refine the quantum tunneling device to be more portable and safe enough to pass regulations to be sold. Another experiment, already being worked on in the 50s, included a microchip to brain interface that could not be considered safe due to the chip overheating. Now, if you're part of control group Kepler-7, we implanted a tiny microchip about the size of a postcard into your skull. Most likely you've forgotten it's even there. But if it starts vibrating and beeping during this next test, let us know. Because that means it's about to hit 500 degrees, so we're going to need to go ahead and get that out of you pretty fast. Even though this experiment did not hold any major scientific importance at that time, interfacing technology with the human brain would become an extremely, EXTREMELY important venture in their company's life. The point is, if we can store music on a compact disc, why can't we store a man's intelligence and personality on one? So I have the engineers figuring that out now. Brain mapping. Artificial intelligence. We should have been working on it 30 years ago. During the time of Aperture's continued existence, Black Mesa had managed to steal a few technologies from Aperture, mainly being the HEV suit, its charger panels, and the gravity gun. 
They also caught wind of Aperture working on teleportation technology due to some of their spies catching wind of the Borealis and its disappearance. However, due to the secrecy of the portal project, there was no easy way for Black Mesa to replicate it. They had to do it from scratch. Also during that time, Cave Johnson had succumbed to Moonrock poisoning, and the portal project was sidelined to focus on their AI projects in order to phase out human testing and to create the generic life form and disk operating system. In the late 1980s, GLaDOS was first activated. She had to be deactivated several times due to violent bursts of anger with the use of Aperture Science Red Phone Plan. This brought the need for more refinement, and the Aperture team started work on personality constructs to tame her violent tendencies. Leadhead attributes Gladys's insanity to her being a moron, stating that once a moron receives petabytes of information, they go insane. However, if Gladys was already a moron, then why would you use an intelligent stampeding sphere on her? You would only use Wheatley on something that's incredibly cunning and smart. In the 1990s, Gladys, being the genius she is, managed to corrupt her morality core to suit her goals. While she now appeared harmless outward, she managed to cunningly shut the entire enrichment center in, poison its employees, and send others to their death in the test chambers under the pretext of nearing neurotoxin for a real-life Schrodinger's cat experiment, the facility ending up being the box and the scientists being the cats, all on Bring Your Cat to Work Day. This is deviously cunning, all the while refining and testing the Polargon in absolute isolation from the outside world. Any Black Mesa spies in the Richmond Center at that point may have also succumbed to her reign, managing to keep Aperture and its secrets from ever seeing the light of day again. Coinciding with the day, GLaDOS locked down Aperture Science, Black Mesa experimenting with a much more dangerous form of teleportation using Zen Relay, created a resonance cascade that led to the death of several Black Mesa employees and Earth being invaded by Zen flora and fauna as well as a combine, defeating the entirety of Earth's armies during the Seven Hour War. GLaDOS, after the invasion of the combine, seeing how their biggest competitor had seemingly destroyed itself in the bid to steal another tech from them, and knowing that the combine would destroy Earth if they got their hands on portal technology, gave them a few technologies such as the high energy pellets, a single updated HEV Mark V suit, as well as new prototype suit charges under the promise that Aperture were to remain secret and isolated. The HEV Mark V and its manual comes into the hands of the resistance led by survivors of the Black Mesa disaster, and is being kept hidden in Kleiner's lab under City 17. I have an infinite capacity for knowledge, and even I'm not sure what's going on outside. All I know is I'm the only thing standing between us and them. All in all, the story of Black Mesa's downfall is a remarkable tale of irony and unintended consequences. It's a story of how the US government, in its quest to steal technology from Aperture Science, inadvertently set in motion events that led to the fall of Black Mesa on a global scale. In stark contrast, Aperture Science located miles below the Earth's surface and isolated from external threats, managed to weather the storm. While the surface world was in turmoil, Aperture continued its experiments and GLaDOS, their central AI, remained in control. The Enrichment Center stood as a testament to scientific innovation, surviving even in GLaDOS's absence for thousands of years while the company was built on the backbone of their work and the alien force that controlled the planet spent years looking for a research vessel that disappeared from their facilities just in hopes to get their hands on their advanced teleportation technology. I'd like to end this video with a line from Cave Johnson and the Perpetual Testing Initiative, which even though it takes place in an alternate universe, could have been the only thing that kept the world safe from the events of Half-Life and ended in a more positive outcome for the planet. Cave Johnson, new owner and CEO of Black Mesa. That's right, you've been bought. First order of business, we're renaming you under the Aperture brand. I'm leaning towards Blapature Mesa.
marketing boys think something else. So, blapature it is. Next, they tell me you people are conducting some anomalous materials research that could result in a resonance cascade. So, I'm shutting that down before you idiots end the world. A resonance cascade? You're supposed to be scientists. Use some common sense.